I wanted to link uh, this issue to a slightly wider theme around managing Gen Y. Uh, young organizations are getting younger in the sense that there are many young people joining the workforce and that's kind of bringing down the average age. So one of the major challenges to my mind from all the conversations that one has with business leaders is how do you connect with that Gen Y employee and how do we need to really redesign our organizations to meet the aspirations and expectations of today's generation. If so, how do you do that? The key here is that the young generation today is very versatile to get the instant knowledge and information that the previous generations didn't have the aptitude, didn't do that. That's right. So the previous generations cannot use power because they had information. That requires a change in attitude. That's the first thing. Second, the young generation does and can do multiple tasks. And the cognitive side is changing because the information essentially instantaneously available and they can connect. So they want to do the meaningful work. I remember 30 years ago, a big industrial family in the top five in the nation, and they have a son coming up, and the father says, you got to go and work on the machines in the factory for two years. A today's millennial will laugh at that because you're doing the same repetitive work and not building anything here. Here, you got to have intellectual challenge to the people coming in. They like to collaborate, create teams. Often many of them at 50,000 feet, they will recite superb theories and concepts and the senior people have to bring them down to earth. But don't mistake it, they want to accomplish something, they need coaching, but you cannot insult them. So use their brain power, help them, work them through, ask the questions, and try to make them successful. Once they get successful in getting to the nitty-gritty, you have some very important uh, human being, human capital going forward. That's the way I look at it. Right. But the whole idea of career paths, for instance, I mean, we were used to working in organizations for five, in some cases, ten years. Today's generation doesn't want to. They want to, they choose their own path in some ways. So how does a modern organization deal with that? Because the whole issue of employee loyalty, is that dead? Yeah, I see, you know, you've heard this before and some of you people doing it. When Jack Welch was running GE, he had 22-year-old mentor. 22. He had every one of his vice chairman had a mentor. They were all 23, 24, 25 because the world is changing. So we have to have senior people come to the speed, work with them, it's going to create some chaos. But the speed of change is very high and you're going to go through this. So I have one company in India that called me up and it's the government owned. And I'm very impressed what the CEO has done. They're absolutely impressed. I said, you're really moving in the right direction. They got the message. Right. And when they do the business reviews, it's very big in India. When they do business reviews, they have these young people. And they ask good questions and they get to the specifics. They're learning. So people forget this. This is a very old model. And I would say at least 40 years I have known. In the investment banking in America, you heard of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. These people recruit young people and they are assigned in the first year to the senior people. These senior people take the young people with them to the clients. And they have an apprenticeship system 
where they are exposed within three months to the CEOs and CFOs of client companies. And they're learning how the senior partners, senior people are interfacing. And those people go quickly from a spreadsheets to good questions in business and finance. And they begin to get within three years superb assignments. We've got to figure this out. You can't lose a good human capital. I wanted to pick up one of the strands that Professor Ramcharan was talking about, the issue of today's generation being multi into multitasking, their ability to handle information. Um, but we also increasingly become a, a society which is faced with the problem of information overload. The point that Professor Ramcharan was making about breaking through the fog. Um, do you believe that we need to create, start creating space for more careful deliberation because insights don't come otherwise. It, it doesn't come instantaneously. It requires patience. It requires hard work. And as a society, are we losing, are we losing our ability to reflect and carefully deliberate solutions? I think in terms of reflection, I think we've gone down seriously because there is an overload of information because so much is available like never before. People, you know, you, you just ask anybody, they know what the Hubble telescope is showing, what is happening here, what is happening there. Too much of information. I don't think there's enough reflection within <coughs> the younger generation. And uh, when you are just loaded with information and there is no necessary assimilation and reflection, you just lot of information. One thing that will happen to you is uh, your attention span will go which is uh, an attention span deficiency is being seen as a qualification today, which is a serious mistake we're making. Because uh, maybe you can play with gadgets, maybe you can do things, but serious developments in science and truly innovative things, path-breaking things will happen only when we are capable of paying constant attention to something. I'm not saying this is a generalized thing. This is never a generalized thing, but if you're talking about a trend, the trend is there is an overload of information and very little assimilation and reflection. You see a huge volume of success all over the place, very young people building companies and just bursting out like that. I think that is a technological feature. The last generation is not that they were less smarter, it is just that uh, these tools were not available. It is just that uh, technology has created so many pathways and so many pos possibilities. But I feel, this is my opinion, but there is a reality attached to it. It's very important that now we are so hugely empowered. What ten thousand men could do, one man can do today. When such a phenomenal capability has come to us, how we exercise it is very, very important. If there is an ant, whichever way it walks, it walks upon you, walks down of you, there is no problem. But once you become an elephant, where you put your foot is an important thing, otherwise destruction will happen. So, the most uh, distressing thing is our longing to grow, our longing to develop, our longing to be successful, is the most destructive process right now. In uh, 2008, when I was at Davos, it just then, the, you know, the economic engineers were carrying long faces, they were all looking very down. So they asked me to handle a session which was titled as Recession and Depression. I said, recession is bad enough, economic recession is bad enough, you don't need mental depression on top of it. So, uh, one reality is, so I was just talking to them and I said, see, right now the way you have structured the economic engine on the planet, what drives the economy, 
is such that if you… if you fail, if you do not succeed, you will be depressed. If you succeed, we will all be damned. Yes, <laughs> because right now, 7.2 billion people, if all of them get educated, if all of them get empowered with technology, if all of them become very industrious and enterprising, I think the planet just has about fifteen to twenty years left. Fortunately, fifty percent of them are lazy. So it's not human intelligence which is saving the planet. It is not human sense which is saving the planet. It's not human love or compassion saving the planet. It's human lethargy which is saving the planet, which is a wrong way to handle our life. If 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 lethargy is a quality, if le being lethargic is a great quality and a virtue, I think it's a wrong place to be. <laughs> being active, being alive is important. But right now, somewhere it's the lethargic in the world who are saving the planet. So we… somewhere the new enterprise needs to think if we're talking about sustainable growth, sustainable levels of success, you cannot have sustainable growth and sustainable success if you don't have a sustainable planet. According to the Living Earth uh, statistics, it says right now the aspiration generally whether we admit it or not, the general aspiration is the whole world wants to live like United States of America. How an average citizen in United States, how they're living, if the whole world has to live like that, they're saying we need four and a half planets, but we have only one. We have identified another one which is a few light years, few million light years away. I don't know if you're planning to go there, if somebody is that enterprising. But right now we have only one and we need four and a half if we succeed. So somewhere we should pray for failure, which is not a good thing. So we have to redefine what is enterprise, we have to redefine what is success, we have to de redefine what's moving forward. If we call moving backward as moving forward, we are asking for trouble. So, yes, we want everybody to succeed, but it is also important because we are hugely, hugely empowered like never before. No other generation as, was as empowered as we are today, we have to redefine what is success, otherwise we will pay a very heavy price if we succeed.